Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Good morning, I am Truptirika Pradhan, Assistant Professor, Department of Obstetricals and Gynecological Nursing, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Today we are going to see review of anatomy and physiology of female reproductive system. So before going to the topics, little bit of uh, uh, introductions will give. Female reproductive organs, what are the things will be there? First one if you will see here, this is the externally, for, uh, like the one will be vagina, two will be the cervix, three will be the endometrium, four will be the ovary, fifth will be the fimbria and sixth will be the uh, ampulla that is uh, fallopian tube, seven will be the uterus. Uh, so this is uh, uh, about the female reproductive organs or systems how it looks. Internal anatomy if you will see the pictures has been shown that side here. So how the fallopian tube is attaching with the ovary and how it will be connecting with the uterus and the cervix then the vagina and down the hymen. So this is the female reproductive organs pictures. Now we will see the introduction. So what it does? The reproductive system is a set of organs that work together to produce offspring. The primary reproductive organs that is gonads or ovaries or testes which produce gametes that is sperms and oocytes and hormones. These hormones helps the reproductive system mature, develop sexual characteristics, regulates its normal physiology, other organs, ducts and glands in the reproductive systems are considered as secondary reproductive organs or accessory reproductive organs. These structures, these are the gonads, testes, all this thing, what it does, it will transport, sustain the gametes and nurture the developing offspring with the help of the hormones. So uh, both the male and female reproductive system that similar structural components because they are formed from the same general tissues. So what are the components? are there. If you see the gonads, gonads is nothing but the sex organs and which produces the sex hormones and gametes. So the ducts, ducts will be designed to transport the gametes. So it will be transporting the gametes with the influence of the hormones. Then accessory glands that will be adding the liquid uh, secretion to the reproductive tract. So these are the organs it will be helping throughout the reproductive system for the nourishment or for the producing of the offsprings. So what exactly external organs what are the things will be there? Reproductive organs of the female are connected four things will be there. One is capillations, fertilization, growth and development of the fetus and its subsequent exit to the outer world. So this capillation, fertilization and the growth it will helping for the development of the fetus throughout the uh, like period. So what are the organs it will be there? It will be broadly divided into external genitalia, internal genitalia and accessory reproductive organs. So on otherwise external genitalia uh, known as vulva or pudendum. This can synonymically call this. So the vulva it includes all the visible external uh, genitalia organs in the perineum. The vulva consists of Mons pubis, Libia majora, Libia minora, hymen, clitoris, vestibule, urethra, skin's gland, Bartholin gland, vestibular bulbs. All are, it will be there in the external genitalia. But how, how it will be bounded anteriorly, posteriorly and laterally. So anteriorly it will be bounded by the Mons pubis, posteriorly by the rectum and also uh, laterally it will be genitocrural uh, fold and uh, bulbar area is covered by the keratinized stomus epithelium uh, cells. So vestibule, already we saw pudend, uh, external genitalia otherwise known as pudendum. So what exactly in vestibule, what other things will be there? So vestibule is a triangular space bounded anteriorly by the clitoris, posteriorly by the forchet and either side by the labia minora. So there is four opening in the vestibules is there. One is urethral opening, vaginal orifice or hymen, I have already shown the pictures. Opening of the Bartholin glands, it is, Bartholin glands is situated superficial in the perineal pouch and skin's gland that is two skin's duct that is open in the vestibule on either side of the external urethral meatus. Then coming to the how the blood supply 
what are the uh, like how the arteries veins and what are the blood supply it is happening in the perineum so there will be arteries will be supplying the blood uh, which arteries is supplying means internal pudendal arteries it is supplying to the labial transverse perineal and artery to the vestibular bulb deep and dorsal arteries to the clitoris so this is the artery which is sub blood supply to this clitoris labial and the vestibular bulb and the branches of the femoral femoral artery in another an artery which is supplying to the superficial and deep external pudendal uh, region then coming to the veins so this is the two arteries is supplying to the blood supply then coming to the veins veins it is uh, from the plexus and it flexes and it drains into internal pudendal vein and coming to the vaginal venous plexus and long saphenous vein so these are the veins where uh, from the plexus is drained through this then coming to the nerve supply now we saw the arteries and veins now we'll see the nerve supply the supply the there will be bilateral spinal somatic nerves will be there so anterior superior part is supplied by the cutaneous branches from the uh, ilioinguinal and genital branch of the genitofemoral nerves so this is the nerves supplying through this then coming to the lymphatics lymphatics that is vulval lymphatic a bilateral drain is under their lymphatic drain that is superficial inguinal nodes and intermediate groups of inguinal lymph nodes that is called gland of clotted external and internal iliac lymph nodes so these are the lymph nodes through which this uh, uh, blood to the perineum drainage is happening now we'll see the uh, internal organs as we told already external organs internal organs and accessory organs under internal organs it will be vagina uterus and fallopian tube and the ovaries and these organs it can be internally seen through the instrument for the inspection if any any problems or anything is deviating from the normal we can see that so these are the things i will just wanted to show here anterior side there will be bladder will be there posterior side rectum will be there this is the bladder and this is the rectum so the bladder and the rectum between this two there will be uterovesicular pouch so this is called uterovesicular pouch and when the baby when the fetus is grows so it will be the uterus or the gravid uterus is suppressing the bladder so the this is so adjacent to situated to each other then coming to the uh, here this is the rectum so this is the pouch of douglas it is situated between the bladder and the rectum this is called pouch of douglas and this is the perineal body so this is we just remember that that is uh, uterovesicular pouch and the pouch of douglas and where the uterus is situated and how it is be compressing the gravid uterus compressing the bladder now we'll see relationship in the anterior we saw the pictures whatever the things we saw in the picture this is the narration of that upper one third is related to the base of the bladder we saw that the up, the bladder is situated in anterior side below the uterus so that is saying upper one third is related to the base of the bladder lower two third is with the urethra Ure urethra it is nothing but connections like we saw the bladder this is the urethra this is the urethra so this is the uh, lower two third the urethra and lower half will, will be firmly embedded with its wall that, that means it is uh, attaching with the wall posterior side that means posterior upper one third is related to pouch of douglas as i already told pouch of douglas between the uh, uterus and the rectum that is the pouch of douglas is that is upper one third related to pouch of douglas middle one third that is called recto vaginal septum recto vaginal septum is nothing but rectum and vaginal that is the that is the septum will be separated by the recto vaginal septum the lower third is separated by the anal canal by the perineal body now, then coming to lateral wall lateral wall upper one third it is attaching with the base of the broad ligament with the ure ureters and uterine artery is lies two centimeter from the lateral furnaces and middle third will be blended with the laviter ani laviter ani already we saw the three muscles so this is attaching with the laviter ani uh, then coming to the lower uh, third is related with the volvo carnivis muscles vestibular bulbs and bartholin glands so this is the lower third will be attaching with that then coming to structures 
So there will be three uh, outer set within the outer world. That is mucus coat, submucous layer, and then muscular layer. So what is mucus coat? Mucus coat is lined by the stratified squamous epithelium cell, uh, epithelium, without any secreting gland. There will be no secreting glands will be there. But in submucous layer, it will be loosely attached the areolar vascular tissues and muscular layer that is consisting of indistinct inner surface circular and outer longitudinal muscles. And the fourth one is fibrous coat which is derived from the endopelvic fascia and which is highly vascular. So these are the structures or layers outer, outwardly we can see. Then coming to vaginal secretion. Vaginal secretions will be pH, vaginal pH will be from the puberty to the menopause. Puberty when the girl is not attended and menarche and menopause is cessation of the menstruation. So throughout this period the pH will be acidic because the do presence of the dodolin bacilli and this dodolin bacilli what it does means it is producing the lactic acid which will perform the glycosin which is present in the exofoliated cells and this pH it varies it will be differing when when the estrogen or hormonal level or estrogenic activity will be uh, will be increasing or it will be uh, uh, deteriorating or it is increasing so it will be ranges will be between 4 to uh, 4 to 5 then coming to the blood supply. So in the blood supply there will be arteries will be there. What are the blood supply means? Cervicovaginal branch of the uterine artery. So that cervicovaginal branch is supplying the blood supply to the uterine artery. Uterine, uterine artery is situated near the uterus. So uterine artery uh, that will be there. So that is the reason when the mother is pregnant we do not uh, make them to sleep in the supine position because the compression of the uterine artery. Then coming to the vaginal artery. Vaginal artery it is a branch of anterior divisions of the internal iliac and it is the origin in the uterine. So a vaginal artery. Then coming to the middle rectal. Then coming to the internal pudendal artery. This is nothing but it is anastomosis. Anastomosis between the anterior and posterior artery that is the veins drain into the internal iliac vein and internal pudendal veins. So these are the arteries which is supplying blood supply to the uterine arteries. Then coming to lymphatic uh, drainage. Lymphatic drainage upper one third is internal iliac group, middle one third to the hymen. Hymen is the la last part of the vagina. So hymen that is internal iliac group. Below the hymen that is the superficial inguinal group. Then coming to the nerve supply. Vagina is supplied by the sympathetic and parasympathetic from the pelvic plexus. So both the sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, plexus will be, uh, will be supplying the nerve supply to the vagina and lower part is supplied by the pudendial nerves. So this is the pictorial uh, like how it looks the uterus. So this is the uterus. The upper part is called fundus and uh, this is called, uh, th this part is called body or cavity and this part like this is called anatomical os. When we will do the pervaginal examination, we will see the anatomical loss and this is called the histological loss and this is called the external loss. Through the external loss during the PV examination when the station is located, we can see the histological loss or anatomical os. Then this is the supravaginal portions and this is the isthmus. Isthmus you see how that is between the internal os and the histological, uh, histological os between this the uh, isthmus will be there. The measurement will be 0 0.5 centimeter and this is from, from the histological os to the external this is completely cervix that is 2.5 centimeter. Why we are telling the measurement and all because we should know the normal measurement of the uterus body and the cervix. So now we will see the uterus. Uterus is a hollow pyriform muscular organ situated in the pelvis between the bladder in front and rectum in the posterior side. What is the position? I have already told that is antiversion or it is called antiflexion position. Uterus usually inclined to the right that is called dextro rotations and the, the cervix will be directed to the left that is called liver rotation and it is comes close in relations with the left ureter and the measurement it will 8 into 5 into 1.25, 8 is length and 5 is the breadth and 1.25 centimeter is the thickness and usually the non-pregnant stage the uterus weight will be 50 to 80 gram but when pregnant it will be coming to 1000 gram and uh, it has got uh, uh, following parts that is called body or corpus, isthmus and cervix. Now already we saw the body or corpus. 
cornua of the uterus cornua of the uterus already we saw the fundus cornua is the uppermost part of the fundus uh, uh, like uh, that is cornua of the uterus that is uterine tube round ligament and ligament of the ovary are attached to it then coming to the isthmus isthmus we have already saw the isthmus between the internal os and the histological os so it is constricted part measuring 0.5 cm and it's situated between the body and the cervix it is limited above the anatomical internal os and below the histological internal os. Cervix it is cylindrical in shape and measurement is 2.5 centimeter and the cavity cavity will be triangular and the base is the above and apex is the below and 3.5 centimeter and cervical canal is fusiform it is 2.5 centimeter and uterine cavity is 6.5 to 7 centimeter and the structures that is uh, uh, in the body that is parametrium, myometrium and endometrium. Parametrium is the outermost part, myometrium is middle part and inner, uh, endometrium is the innermost part. Then parametrium it will be serous coat and it is adherent to the underlying muscles but in myometrium this the thick or smooth muscles will be there. It is connective tissue during pregnancy when you will give any uh, any prostaglandin or any uh, uh, drugs and all it is affecting in the uh, in the myometrium. So, it will be helping for the augmentation of the labor. Uh, then endometrium it is the mucus lining of the cavity and it is the lamina propria and the surface of the epithelium. Then coming to the accessory organ that is called breast. The breast is having modified sebaceous glands and this is bilateral and in the female constitute as otherwise known as accessory reproductive organs and it is related or concerned with the lactation following the childbirth. Shape of the breast and the, of the women in different period of the life it will keep changing or varies and extend from the second to sixth rib of the mid clavicular line. Mid clavicular line means middle of the clavicle. From second to sixth rib it will be measuring. The li it lies in the sub subcutaneous tissues and the fascia covering the pectoral as measures and the breast is weight is 200 to 300 gram during the childbirth. So, this if you see the anatomy I have already told the pectoral as majoral. This is the pectoral as majoralis and this is the pectoral mass here. This is the pectoral fascia. This is the ligament of uh, this is the ligament of Cooper, this is lobules, this is the lobules, this subcutaneous fat, lactiferous sinus, this is the nipple, lactiferous duct, alveoli and skin. So, what it does means during the, uh, always we, we see that prolactin hormone during the uh, childbirth, prolactin hormone initiating or it is triggering the uh, lobules or the uh, like lactiferous ducts to uh, preparing and it will be liberating when the baby uh, sucks the milk. So, the what is the blood supply means the lateral thoracic branches of the axillary artery, internal mammary, intercostal artery. These are the arteries supplying to the blood supply uh, to the uh, breast and the veins will be uh, follows the course of the arteries. It will, it will be following the arteries and then coming to lymphatics that is lateral hemisphere upper convexity, medial convexity and inferior convexity. So, these are the lymphatic drainage and this is next is the nerve supply, the nerve supply in the fourth, fifth and sixth intercostal nerves and development that is parenchyma of the breast developed from the ectoderm and it is connective tissue stroma from the mesoderm. So, with this I am completing uh, the anatomy and physiology of reproductive uh, systems where we came to know that the uterus and how the supply, uh, all the um, blood supply, arteries, nerves and all. So, we should know that with this I am concluding. Thank you.